rise as you were able for our opening song of our first gathering of Servant Entrance Mass in the Feast of Creation, Rain Down. I think as we gather here, we can see that uh, the good Lord does bring down love upon his people. And just for maybe 15 seconds or so, uh, just look around. Just enjoy and celebrate uh, who's here, why we're here, and how this loving God is allowing this to happen especially with uh, some decent weather. And you know my record for weather is not good. <laughs> but here we are. The entrance, servants' entrance people gathered, house churches of different types, but we're gathered here as one people. And yes, um, I had a tea time at 1 o'clock. <laughs> but I thought it was going to be too cold for golf. Yeah. Now you know I'm lying. <laughs> but here we are. And all that has gone on in our lives with COVID that has kept us from each other, all that has gone on at St. John Fisher, with Terry, with other things that have just kind of sliced into our lives in a way that has separated us from each other. And so we can gather today in the midst of election, and still celebrate this season of creation. If you have followed our prayer services for the last few weeks from the servants' entrance, they've been building on Pope Francis and calling this time during September and now tomorrow with the Feast of St. Francis. So we're going to sneak that in today. The season of creation. A time for us to appreciate, to pray about, and to work on our environment and to be serious about it. So that still is going to be our theme for this Mass as we conclude these five weeks of celebration. So with our full trust in God and gratitude for our gathering in the name of the Father 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Recognizing all of us have our own challenges with taking care of Mother Earth, and maybe how we have abused it, misused it, and I'm sure that we all have our way and that we have done that. So as we pray about this season of creation and to conclude with the Feast of St. Francis, let's take a few moments maybe just to recognize in ourselves how we may have failed and in that to ask for the Lord's mercy. Lord God, for the times that, that I, that we as individuals have failed to take care of Mother Earth, this gift of creation that you have given us, that we will recognize, accept our responsibility, and move forward to take care of what you have given us. Lord, have mercy. For the times that we recognize in our world, in our country, in our cities, in our homes, and how we have failed in that, and yet to know that you continue to be with us and with your spirit to guide us in how we can improve. Christ, have mercy. Amen. For the gift of the spirit to continue to guide us to celebrate this season of creation, to continue to bring out your presence as we see it in our lives in creation. Lord, have mercy. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. And now in thanksgiving for this beautiful, beautiful day of creation and for the beautiful gathering that we have here, let's give our glory and our praise to God.
Let us pray. Loving God, yours is the vineyard and its harvest, yours the kingdom of justice and peace. You call your people to tend its growth. Bless the work entrusted to our hands that we may offer you an abundance of just, sustainable, and flourishing works, a rich harvest of peace. And this prayer we make in the name of Jesus and the Spirit, who are now one God with you forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for our first reading. Sue, please. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning a vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. hillside. My friend dug the soil, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. And within it built a watchtower and hewed out a wine press. Then my friend looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I had not done? Why, when I looked for the crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now I will tell you, now I will let you know what I mean to do to my vineyard. Take away its hedge, give it to grazing, break through its wall, let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It will not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the God of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are God's cherished plant. Our God looked for justice, but found bloodshed, for integrity, but only a cry of distress. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. Dismiss all anxiety from your minds. Present your needs to God in every form of prayer and in petitions of full gratitude. Then God's own peace, which is beyond all understanding, will stand guard over your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, my brothers and sisters, your thoughts shall be, should be wholly directed to all that is true, all that deserves respect, all that is honest, pure, admirable, decent, virtuous, or worthy of praise. Live according to what you have learned and accepted, and what you have heard me say and seen me do. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of God. Please stand as you are able for the gospel. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Jesus said to the chief priests and elders of the people, listen to this parable. There was a property owner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, installed a wine press, and erected a tower. Then the owner leased it out to tenant farmers and went on a journey. When vintage time arrived, the owner sent aides to the tenants to divide the shares of the grapes. The tenants responded by seizing the aides. They beat one, killed another, and stoned a third. A second time, the owner sent even more aides before. They treated them in the same way. Finally, the owner sent the family heir to them, thinking, they will respect my heir. When the tenants saw the heir, they said to one another, Here is the one who stands in the way of our having everything. The simple act of murder would solve that problem for us. With that, they seized and killed the heir outside the vineyard. What do you suppose the owner of the vineyard will do to those tenants? And they replied, The owner will bring that wicked crowd to a horrible death and lease the vineyard out to others who will see to it that there are grapes for the proprietor at vintage time. And Jesus said to them, Did you ever read in the scriptures, The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. It was our God's doing, and we find it marvelous to behold. For this reason I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a nation that will yield a rich harvest. My sisters and brothers, the good news of salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I've been reading several books, maybe several hundred books, since March. 
I'm assuming you too have had your share, but uh, I've been having a lot of eye trouble, so I can't read very long or very much, so I have audio, and now my hearing's going. <laughs> but I've been reading um, especially books from Richard Rohr, and I'm sure that you're somewhat familiar with him. And the last book that I read, now I am reading for the third time, The Universal Christ, and um, I'm still grappling with it. It's a piece of work that, boy, it just, it just really turns everything upside down in a very good way. One of the conclusions that he comes to is that there was a first incarnation before Jesus. Now, if that doesn't turn you upside down, then what is that first creation, first incarnation? I just told you, didn't I? <laughs> that first incarnation, he says, is creation, is the universe. That's where God has initially given us that presence of God in the world. It's in creation. And the more I think about that, how true that is right from the very beginning, that's all of this in the universe and everything that we're learning about it all gives us a sense of who this God is. And so the second incarnation when Jesus came is a way to affirm and to help us maybe clarify further what that incarnation and that gift of creation really means. Therefore, it's not unusual that we're going to find in the scriptures as we did today from Isaiah, from Matthew and Jesus and the gospel and the stories are telling about the vineyard. Now, if you picked up just a little bit of, do you think God is ticked off just a tad if you listen to that first reading from Isaiah, so here's, here's the owner of the, uh, the vineyard, and he's talking to the people. He's talking to those who are caring for it and so on. He says, here, I planted this vineyard, put out the very best of everything. I put up the tower to protect it. I did all this here to provide for fertilizing it and for watering. I mean, I've done everything I can do that this vineyard is really going to give us some great, great grapes and some really good wine. And what happens? The grapes are wild. They're not good. And so it's like the proprietor, the owner, is saying, what is this? I've given you everything you need to make this work. I've provided all of that but you have to do your share. I can't do it for you. And so then that is taken away. It's taken away not by God, but it's taken away by the choices that people make. The same thing is true in the gospel today with the story of the vineyard and Jesus telling the story. He almost repeats that same line about, I put up the tower the very best of vines. I did all of this and made all this possible so that it would grow. And then he goes on a journey. So if we're looking at maybe the Big Bang Theory or whatever the latest is, and God got all this started, and God has given us everything we need to make this world work, and then he goes on a journey. Goodbye. You've got everything you need to make this world work. And then periodically God might take a look and say, What's going on? How are things going here? And he can see that he wants to collect. He wants to collect from that gift that he has given the best of what people have provided. And the tenants take away and want it for themselves. They've turned around what God intended of how things are to work. The bottom line being, in God's love, God has given us all. And today, thank you, Jesus, has given us at least the opportunity. I think they said rain is coming at 3.05, so. 
Be ready. But God has given all of that to us, everything that we need, and says, go. Be that for each other. Take care of each other. Use all that I have given you. And sometimes it turns out that we don't do that. And just what he was saying in that parable of the gospel, that they want to take everything for themselves. And that's not the way God intended it. So in love, God has made all of this possible. Richard Rohr's incarnation, the first incarnation, is simply God's love shot out, given out. And that love cannot be missed. It's right here. It's all over. And then we go and we live that love. And then we see that things happen, sometimes right here, sometimes in our family, believe it or not, sometimes even in our leaders. And so what happens? We need to have a conscience formation. We need to have a time where we look at our conscience and to simply ask the question of ourselves, of our leaders, how have we been good stewards? How have we not been good stewards? I think that's where we are today. We're at that point of looking at the stewardship responsibility that we have. As we examine that and move through that kind of stewardship, knowing that God has intended it by his love for this, this way to happen, the last step then, stewardship, is all about the common good. It's not about any one of us grabbing it for ourselves, but we do that for the common good. And that's Jesus' basic formula. Love, stewardship of the love that we have received, and that love and stewardship for the common good. If that's the three steps that we keep up here, all of us keep in our hearts and our minds and live that for everything that we do, then when it comes time for God to say, okay, I want an accounting of the grapes, of the, the things that you have produced, we're going to have it to offer. Because God has loved us, we have loved one another, we've been good stewards of that love, and we understand that that love means the common good. So we end this five weeks of season of creation today, the Feast of St. Francis tomorrow. It's a good place for us to be, to pray, to gather, to make sense out of this. And yes, we have to begin here. We can't point the finger out until we have asked that question here. But then we do need to reach out and to look and see what's happening out beyond us as well. How do we do that? Boy, there's some challenges that we have. And we know right here in our own area with the, the water situation in Flint, how the poor are disadvantaged in so many different ways because they haven't got the means to even deal with COVID, where we might be able to deal with COVID in our homes and be protected with safe water. There are so many things. But what we can do right now is vote. That is so, so important at this point. Examine conscience. Look at what the individuals who are running for office, whatever office that is, examine what you see in their conscience, in their actions, in their stewardship, and then vote accordingly. We know that it can't be a single issue. That does not work. That does not work. It has to be the common good and how that is expressed in so many different ways. So I encourage all of us as those who are gathered here today and people of faith that we seriously look at how God has loved us how are we responsible in stewardship? And with the examination of that, how are we doing? How are the people that we're going to elect, how are they doing? And for the common good. So I'd like to conclude, if we could, by praying together the season of creation prayer, which you have on your card. And it's not just a prayer that we read, but it's a prayer, hopefully, that we will absorb and take as a part of our experience today as we end this five week of prayer for the season of creation. 
Let's pray together. Creator of life, at your word, the earth brought forth plants by yielding seed and trees of every kind bearing fruit. The rivers, mountains, minerals, seas, and forests sustains life. The eyes of all look to you to satisfy the needs of every living thing. In your wisdom, you granted a Sabbath, a blessed time to rest in gratitude for all that you have given, a time to liberate ourselves from vicious consumption, a time to allow the land and all creatures to rest from the burden of production. But these days our living pushes the planet beyond its limits. Our demands for growth and our never-ending cycle of production and consumption are exhausting our world. We have not allowed the land to observe her Sabbath, and the earth is struggling to be renewed. During this season of creation, we ask you to grant us courage to observe a Sabbath for our planet. Strengthen us with the faith to trust in your providence. Inspire us with the creativity to share what we have been given. Teach us to be satisfied with enough and send your Holy Spirit to renew the face of creation. In the name of the one who came to proclaim good news to all creation, Jesus Christ, amen. I don't know if we can do friendly time. You look friendly. <laughs> I'm not sure it will be safe for us to do friendly time. So maybe we can just take a few moments of quiet time. We've prayed. We've heard God's word. Let that rest with us before we bring all of our cares and concerns to the Lord. So we collect all of our thoughts and our prayer and our quiet time. We bring it to the Lord for our prayers of the faithful. We'd like to ask Jeff to come up and lead us in our prayer. I didn't know who it was until he stood up. So <laughs> thanks for standing. that in this time of ecological and climate crises, the human family may learn to respect all creatures and care for them as signs of God's wondrous love, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may use our resources and creativity to undo the damage we have done to God's creation and to sustain God's gift in creation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That political campaigns will educate the people of all nations to the seriousness of the issues facing the world community and call forth a strong commitment to care for our common home, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the successful implementation of stronger international commitments to reduce global warming and care for the oceans and all the global commons, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we, that we may work to end the suffering of those in poverty and reach out in solidarity to those who suffer most from ecological abuse and destruction, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we, as companions of Christ, may preach and act with courage, attentive to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, in implementing significant commitments to care for earth, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And beyond this season of creation, what's in your heart that you would like to bring to the Lord today for our prayers we gather? And maybe, first of all, for all those who do suffer with the COVID, who have uh, died with COVID and so on, 
and that they indeed will find the vaccination and whatever else that we need and for all of us in the world to be faithful to how we can do our part to rid ourselves of COVID. We pray to the Lord. Lord what else would you like to pray about today? For the lonely, okay, thank you. For those fighting chronic illnesses. Chronic illnesses, thank you. For those in the battle with cancer. Battle with cancer, thank you. For those that think about stuff to be prayed for the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Okay, for the good people that we connect with in the CCRT, that their needs are met and that we can continue to be there for them. Thank you. Somebody here? Thank you to all who put this together. It brought smiles to my face. It tears to my eyes to see all these amazing people again. Thank you for all who did this. For all who have helped us put this together. And there are many, many people who have done their part, including you, to drag your self over here, uh, knowing that it's going to rain very soon. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you for your music. Thank you, Terry, for all of your hard work, for the sound system, and our readers, everybody, for making this possible. And I, I do agree, Rose, that it's really, really uplifting. And I think, for me, I know I needed this shot in the arm very badly, and then to be able to move forward. Thank you. Any, thank you. Anybody else? For those separated from families, and I'm over at uh, Bellbrook Nursing Home as well, and just to know how they have suffered because people can't come and visit them, and I go there once a month, but you're right, for those separated. In Thanksgiving for Christ the Redeemer, allowing us to have our celebration here and being so understanding to our community and welcoming. Yes, Thanksgiving for the Christ Redeemer community that allows us to ruin their grass and to, <laughs> to uh, be on their concrete, but uh, very grateful that they're allowing us to do this. Please. Peaceful, peaceful elections. Amen. Amen. Please. For the servant's entrance, I didn't quite catch whatever is more than that, but yes, that the servant's entrance can maybe be a, a strong vehicle just to help us continue to relate and to be and to celebrate. Thank you. For all teachers, parents, and students who are struggling with online learning, we pray to the Lord. Yes, our schools, teachers, students, wow, what a challenge. So we bring them to prayer. Please, Vince. For peace and, and better health for Dick Brennan and his family, Dick is now in the hospital facing a major crisis. Dick Brennan and his challenge at this time, and maybe for all of those, too, that we know in our faith families and our families that are suffering. Thank you, Vince. One more. Safety of travelers. Safety of travelers. Thank you. <laughs> Loving God, we are grateful that we are able to gather. We ask you for another 15 minutes of dry weather <laughs> as we celebrate this Eucharist. And we are so, so grateful that we can gather and be in your presence. Help us to be faithful stewards that we all work towards the common good and to continue to make this world the way you intended it to be. This prayer we make in the name of Jesus and the Spirit who are now one God with you forever and ever. Amen.
My sisters and brothers, we pray now that our sacrifice, these gifts of bread and wine, and the gift of ourselves and the gift of creation may be acceptable now to God, the Almighty Creator. Loving God, accept these gifts which Jesus has asked us to offer in his memory, gifts of bread and wine, gifts of ourselves, our energies, and our commitment to serve you with gratitude and love in caring for the community of creation. May our faithful service bring us to the fullness of your redemption. And this prayer we make in the name of Jesus and the Spirit, who are now one God with you forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. A right powerful and ever loving God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. All things are of your making. All times and seasons obey your laws. But you chose to create us in your own image, setting us over the whole world in all of its wonder. You made us stewards of creation to praise you day by day for the marvels of your wisdom and power through your Son, Jesus Christ. And so we praise you, loving God, with all the saints as we sing our song of joy. Holy, 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 I invite you to join in our posture of prayer, simply extending our hands out as a way to enter more fully into this Eucharist. Loving God, you are holy indeed, and you are the fountain of all holiness. Make holy these gifts by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. O 
we bow together. The mystery of faith. Christ will come again. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And therefore, as we celebrate this memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, loving God, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And so we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, that we too may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church, your people throughout the world, and help us grow in love. Together with Francis, our Pope, Alan, our Bishop, and all your people, especially those who gather this afternoon to celebrate the sacred gift of Eucharist. Remember also all of our sisters and brothers, all of our family and friends who have fallen asleep in the hope of the new life of resurrection. Welcome them into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Apostles, St. John Fisher, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Our brother Jesus who came to us as the second incarnation to be God's presence to us and he taught us that special prayer that really unites us together. Let's pray together that prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May Christ's gift of peace be with all of you. Amen. And we share with each other some sign, some way of saying peace to each other. Peace. Peace. calls us to be his people, his disciples in the world today. And happy are we as those disciples to come and celebrate this gift of Eucharist, the food for our journey.
May the body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. For Eucharist this afternoon, we have six servers who will come, and they will come to you. And we have the Eucharist in a cupcake liner. They will hold out that liner to you, and if you are able just to reach in and to take the communion yourself, it'll be safe. And then we go to the next liner with Eucharist, okay? Margaret, the body of Christ. Amen. Julie, the body of Christ. Tom, the body of Christ. Barb, the body of Christ. Sue, the body of Christ.
is a place for the sadness Hold on to love There is a season of gladness Hold on to love When pain and confusion seem endless Hold on to love We come to Let us pray together. Our servant's entrance entrance blessing prayer. (laughs) Most loving God, thank you for your calling and for nurturing in us a disciple's heart, a heart that rejoices in your promptings, a heart sustained by your spirit, and a heart encouraged by the support and love of our sisters and brothers. God, you offer us new beginnings. 
fill us with confidence in our work and may our efforts extend beyond the threshold of our homes, out through the servants' entrance to a world so desperately in need of hope and healing. Dream your dream in us that in this house church, your vision and direction will take shape in us and we will be transformed by your spirit. May your presence in what we do encourage us to dare and may solidarity and togetherness be our strength. We make this prayer in your name with Jesus the Christ and your Holy Spirit. Amen. Am I hot again? Oh, yes. I meant microphone. <laughs> This is the prayer that we've been using every Sunday with our service entrance prayer services that come out. I would encourage you to pray that, and it'd be nice if we had an opportunity to just kind of share and talk about things. I don't know if that's possible with uh, the temperatures going down or whatever, but if you would like to, we'll have our final blessing and closing song, and if you want to stay for a while, what time is it? Anybody know? So we've, we've got uh, maybe two and a half minutes <laughs> before Christ the Redeemer says, your, your welcome is overstayed. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God, God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So let us go in peace now to love and serve the Lord and each other and continue to be that presence of God in the world through our discipleship and through our stewardship of creation. Go in peace. Please join in our final song, Christ Be Our Light. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your Oh, many despair.